Welcome to Nerd Fun, everybody, right here at 90.3. We are flying. WHPC. What is this from? The voice of Nassau Community <laughs> College. My name is Joe Ritter. Who are we here with, guys? I am Black Panther. I am... am a king. And you, sir? I am Black Panther also. Oh, man! <laughs> T'Chaka's here, too. Yo, 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 yo. Before you died. <laughs> Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. <laughs> well, if anyone was going to see Black Panther, they were going to, uh... They were definitely going to see it by now. No. You... Hey, Joe, want to lower that music? Yeah, just a little yeah, bit. Got it. Oh, it's the wrong way. My bad. God, Sorry. wear your headphones for once. I am wearing them. <laughs> I'm like wear half Wear them on deaf. your ears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we had a lot of crazy things to go into. So we were debating very, uh, I guess vehemently is the word, as to... I was saying we should be spoilery today, but the two of them convinced me otherwise. They said we should give it one more week because, you know, you never know. People have plans over the weekend. Course, you know, things come up. So we'll give one more week before we go really in-depth. I'm just crazy that Han Solo died. I, I know, right? It did like, happen. Han Solo's dead, everybody. Yeah, so what we're talking about, spoiling, <laughs> we should probably get into that more, is... The Avengers Infinity yes. War, which came out this week and made a ton of money. In fact, Avengers Infinity, Fo- Infinity War has entered the record books with an estimated global opening of $630 million, making it the highest global opening weekend of all time, without even counting China. It opens there on May 11th. The previous worldwide opening record holder was the Fate of the Furious with $541.9 million. That's a lot of money. Domestically, the film debuted with $106 million on Friday, number two of all time, continued with $83 million on Saturday, number one of all time, and an estimated $61 million on Sunday for a number one Sunday of all time for a des- domestic opening of $250 million, which marks the highest opening weekend of all time, beating Star Wars The Force Awakens, which had $248 million. It's insane. I knew it. I called it. I said it was going to be the number one movie of all time as far as for opening weekend. I don't think it's going to break the record of Avatar and Titanic, uh, but I think it will be number three of all time. Really? That's where I have it. Well, it definitely deserved it. Uh, we're it was gonna really good movie. We're gonna go into like a yeah, little it was an re- unbelievable. We're gonna movie. go to our spoiler-free version of uh, review <clears throat> in the second half of our show. About like three thirty, three thirty-five ish. We'll be getting in depth, going over stuff, what we liked, what we didn't like, without spoiling anything. Though we're gonna give everyone one more week before we really spoil anything for you. Spoil. Well, I keep saying that wrong. Spoiler. Like Spo- spoiler. 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 Right. spoiler man's in the movie. But before we do, <laughs> we want to talk about some video games that we've been playing. Justin just finished the game. We're going to talk about finished it. We're going to talk about or uh, something that's returning over the summer, some of our favorite memories from that channel. Uh, we're talking about Justin thought of this, and I thought it was a great idea, Justin. 20 years ago. Yes. Right? We're going to talk yeah. about the number one movie. That's of all that I got. Time. I only got movie. Oh. I couldn't find TV show, although I know what it is. It's ti- it's uh, Titanic. It's uh, it's Seinfeld was the number one show going on. So what's this? That is thirty years ago. <laughs> oh, that's thirty years yes. ago. <laughs> oh, I should look the dates. Yes, you should have. Great. So great. we got the number one. Great movie, call, Coachman. A number one movie twenty years ago, and the number one movie thirty years ago. Yes, on we're, this date. And we're gonna talk all about all of that. Um, I've been playing a lot of a certain series of game too, which we can talk more about. Which I hope they make another one, uh, uh, the next iteration of this game soon. So before, but first, Justin, you have some unfinished business. Yes, that uh, you finished. I've been playing Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze for the last couple of weeks, and I finally <clears throat> beat it. It's on the Wii U. It is going to be on the Nintendo Switch in a little bit, though. Uh, I'm not going to get that version because I think you know I got as much out of this game that I'm possibly going to get. It's one of those games that I've mentioned before that there's tons of replayability in this game because there's so much hidden stuff. To 100% this game, it's going to take you know 20, 25 hours, so it's a game you could definitely go back and play, and there's different combinations of characters. You could play with you know Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong, Donkey Kong and Dixie Kong, and Donkey Kong and Cranky Kong, so you could kind of you know do different things. They each have different abilities, so it's one of those games where... Uh, it's it's super fun. It's pretty easy at times, but you know certain levels can be tricky. Uh, just like any Donkey Kong Country game, it's got amazing music. The visuals are great. Uh, it's definitely one of the highlights for the Wii U. And you know, just looking back at the Wii U, it has the Wii U had some really amazing games. That's some of my favorite games ever. Yeah, it and does. This is, this is definitely in the top ten for the Wii U. 
I um, I was a bit, very big fan of the Wii U. Uh, I know it was definitely the worst selling Nintendo system next to the Virtual Boy. Yes, but it was it, it was very charming. You know, I liked it, it a lot. Out. Um, I can't wait to buy some of these games on the Switch since I didn't own a Wii U. So for me, it will definitely be worth it to pick these games up. Well, that's why you see that's why they're releasing a bunch of these games for the uh, for the Switch because a lot of people uh, didn't want to buy a Wii U because there was only like five or six good games on it. See, for me, it wasn't that the Wii U was bad or anything. It's just I have become such a my own bubble of a gamer. I've seen, I just play PC because it's the easiest to do. You know, I just tell everyone I'm doing my homework and I just alt tab into a game. Yeah, well, so you know, I uh, for Wii, you actually have to sit there at a TV and do it. And mm, no, I can't do that. I, uh, I'm very eager for the uh, the Wii Shop, uh, the Wii Shop, the Switch Shop. Wii Shop. Okay. We know what you meant. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm very eager for when they uh, start announcing N64 titles coming to the Switch, because that's when it's going to really start killing the Wii U. Because right now, the only two things I use my Wii U for are for N64 emulated games and for uh, for Smash Brothers. Are you rebu- Will you rebuy <clears throat> N64 games on the Switch? Uh, absolutely. You would? Absolutely. Okay. For fair. the ability to carry them anywhere I go? Absolutely. Justin, would you do that? Uh, it's tough. Cause Cause I, I don't really take my Switch anywhere, so no, I wouldn't. I don't have any N64 games on the Wii U. I have a bunch on the Wii, and I enjoy playing it on there, but I like playing my N64 well, my, with my N64. <clears throat> if I had a preference to play the N64 games, I, it would definitely be on the Wii, without question, but my Wii died. I remember you saying so that. So I had to I had to give it a nice Viking funeral. I um, like playing it on the N64, though. If I was to choose an of actual course. system, I like playing it on the system it was intended for. I know a lot of people don't like that controller. I don't think it's the best controller. It's very weird, but I'm used to it. <laughs> I could see if somebody was like, you know, just starting off, they're six years old, in the year 2018, they think, what the heck is this? Yeah, they're freaking out looking I, at I it. You know, there was that. a lot of uh, there was a lot of controversy surrounding that controller. That was like the the quintessential. Okay, video games have gotten too complicated. If the controllers are starting to look like this, yeah. Um, one you of my favorite. Them now. Yeah, well, well, no, the the controllers now are perfect. Yeah. But there's a a lot of buttons. There's I mean, a lot of buttons, I mean, on the but they're, they're Super Nintendo. There was four buttons and then two triggers. Yeah, but at the same time, like it was still, it's still a genius designed controller. I'd go on record saying that the Xbox 360 controller is one of the best controllers ever made. But that uh, was a wa- that was perfect. But that was a while back ago now. Yeah, but they're basing most controllers off of that. The PlayStation controller was an excellent controller. They're ba- they're keeping that design. They're just giving it little tweaks and technology upgrades. Yeah, Nintendo kind of switches. Each system's got a different. You know what's video. pretty cool? If you want to hear something really quickly, um, for the Xbox One, I you know saw. the the old Duke yeah, controller. They mm-hmm. they remade it for the Xbox One, and when you hit the uh, bu- the center button, to, like turn on the the console. Mm-hmm. It plays the little yeah, animation from the original Xbox. It's so cool. I was like, whoa, nostalgia's uh, calling, baby. Probably cost a lot of money, <clears throat> Seven, though, I think it was like, it was like 80 bucks. So much money for controllers. And it's not even wireless, because Xbox One doesn't allow... It doesn't allow... They don't allow their technology to any company except for Xbox or Microsoft. Oh, this was made by a third party? Yes, this is made by a company who... The guy... It's made by like a custom controller company, but the guy who like made the Duke originally, like he like spearheaded this. So it's pretty cool. It's not I thought it was Xbox sanctioned. I'm sure it's Xbox sanctioned, but unless Microsoft makes it, they won't let you take their uh yeah, because I saw it on the official Xbox page that they. Yeah, put no, that but out. they won't. But they still won't let these guys use their wireless That's stupid. technology. If you're gonna put it on the official Xbox page, you should be giving these people access to make the wireless because, technology. But then, the, but then the argument is, why can't everyone have the same thing? Why yeah. can't other companies have it? Because they're not working directly with Microsoft. No, they all are but to my, make Xbox stuff. Probably, to make yeah. Xbox controllers. Yeah. No, no, probably they're not. Are. Duke, that this wasn't Microsoft made this. This is a co- a different company made it, and that's it. Like a different company made it. That's so stupid. Yeah. That's really dumb. That like this recreation of the Duke has nothing to do with Microsoft, besides the fact that when they were done, it looks awesome, and Microsoft said, "Oh, let's just throw that everywhere." That's so dumb. 
Yeah, like well. that's really, really dumb. Microsoft is, doesn't make their best decisions all the time. But like, oh, you, you killed it! I was gonna go out and buy one of these because I love those controllers. I love the Duke controllers. You I have still, an Xbox One. I have an original Xbox, and I have a Duke controller for it. But I, I love that design. You know, it's classic. It's what I love. And if I'm gonna right. go out and get an Xbox One, which I think I might have to because I, I want to join. I want to join up with uh, with everyone that all my friends have the Xbox One. Right. So it's just like I want to join up with that eventually. But I I would have bought that controller easy. But now yeah. I'm not going to. Well, most controllers are around the same price range anyway. So yeah, but if it's not wireless, then what's the point? Eh, true, but you know that's stupid. It's probably got a long wire. Who yeah, cares? it's only a nine Moving foot on. wire. Yeah. Anything else? We spent a lot of Video time games? on the Duke. What are you playing? Uh, yeah, I've been replaying the Fallout games recently. Uh, I've been replaying mostly Fallout New Vegas Beat and the, Fallout uh, Four. I, I tried to play New Vegas. I just remember attacking someone like in the first minute, and then he chased me for like twenty five minutes, and I never returned to the game. Should I go back and try and play? <laughs> <again? laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you should absolutely play through this game. It's one of the best open. It's one of the best RPG it's probably games. Probably still attacking me. It probably still is. <laughs> Right Honestly, now. I wouldn't doubt that at all. It's, it's a long game, Vegas. How long are you uh, going to put into this? You can probably... Like 20 hours? 20? Yeah. That's... Yeah, how, how fast are you going? Uh, I mean, I like to take my time with games. Yeah, no, 20 is pretty quick, man. Okay, so... You're looking at like 60 hours. Oh my god, it's too much, And man. that's just for the main quest. That's why I like games like Donkey Kong, Tropical Freeze, where it's just, you know, the start to well, a level and an end to a level. Well, the thing with, with New Vegas is, is that... There's so much to do that you're going to start doing the main quest. And then as you're doing the main quest, you're going to realize, you know, I could make this a lot easier on myself if I just go do that quest first yeah. and then come back to the main quest. And then while you're doing that quest, you're going to go, you know, there's another quest over here. Let me get some easy XP and then I'll go back. And it's just, it's a game. It just snowballs you. Like it starts with a snow snowball and you just continuously build and build and build and do more and more and more. Do you know if it's backwards compatible with the uh, Xbox One? Um, You're playing it on your 360? I'm playing it on my PC. Oh, PC. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Fallout games, in my opinion, are the best on PC, even though Fallout 4 has a mod market for the Xbox One, which is really cool. I believe it was the first game to do that. It was the first game to allow mods on console. The uh, Bethesda, they demanded it from, X, from Microsoft to allow them to, mod, to put mods on there. And Microsoft Microsoft kind of went, well, Fallout 3 was one of the best-selling games for Xbox, so don't really have a choice on that one. Yeah. So, it would, um, I would like to say yes. I couldn't see how they couldn't make that backwards compatible. I can compatible. look it up if you guys want to. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't think that that's not backwards compatible. New Vegas is definitely, if you have it at home and you're scared because of how you know hard it is, just put the difficulty down a little bit and then... And just tr- you just got to get out of the starting zones. Once you get out of the starting zone and you get the ball rolling, that's kind of when you're going to realize it gets a lot easier. And not that it's self-explanatory. You still have to figure it out and you still have to like, you know, play it like like little by little and like work your way up. But it becomes a lot easier. The opening levels have always been the hardest in Fallout because they really just thrust you into the combat. They it, really don't give you much of a tutorial. By the way, it is backwards compatible on the Xbox One. All right, so you definitely go give it a try, Justin. I'll give it a whirl, I suppose. It's a lot of fun. And Fallout 4 is... I like New Vegas better, if I'm honest with everyone out there. Um, Fallout 4 is still a hell of a game. And there's been a lot of rumors recently of Fallout, the new Fallout game could be under development with a multiplayer platform. They were saying that they were thinking about making a Battle Royale version of Fallout in a city where you can build like forts and stuff and defend. And it looked like it, it sounds like it'd be fun, but I wouldn't want to see that for a Fallout IP. I want to just see Fallout be Fallout. And I want to explore New York. I want New York City to be the next city in Fallout. Because. You know, you never get New York in movies or video games, so it's good well, for New York we City did. to get a. We did in like all of the Marvel movies. I'm just kidding. It's literally every movie in the video <laughs> yeah. game is New York. The problem with. <laughs> Fallout. The problem with Fallout is, for those of you who don't know, just quickly go into it, is that basically the game takes place as if the Cold War never ended, and we were permanently stuck in, like, the 50s. 
So if like the 50s just continued in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, we were just stuck in the 50s mentality. And the 50s, like, style of doing things, like, all the music in the game is, like, from the 50s. Nice. And it's really, it's awesome. Everything about the game is really cool. Um, all the stereotypes and everything, like, they really do their homework on what did the 50s look like. Like, in New Vegas, it's not the, uh, the illustrious Las Vegas that we know today. It's the Las Vegas from the 40s and the 50s. It's not that big. There's, like, three casinos, four casinos, max. So My name's Justin. Yeah.